The logistical challenge of this week was getting everything together for my residency permit application. I got up bright and early on my birthday and walked past a building Narva's locals call Trump Tower on the way to the police station. When I got to Vita team, I was greeted by honey cake, flowers, and an Estonian scarf. My coworkers didn't let me feel lonely on this birthday abroad, and I'm so grateful to have been placed at this specific nonprofit. Vita Team is a place of friend making, informal education, and abundant caffeine, the last of which I was sure to take advantage of before class. I taught my first class in Narva. We played introductory games and I got a feel for what the rest of the year may look like in terms of the students' initial personalities. Some are shy and some are funny and I look forward to getting to know them better over the next nine months. I've said this before, but the environment feels very comfortable and the longer I am here, the more I learn about the good work that this organization provides. My co-teachers, Alina and Galena, both have a calming, positive presence. The way they connect with individual students is admirable, and I'm sure I will learn a lot from them simply by assisting in these lessons. Natasha, my coordinator, has also been incredibly supportive. When I was applying for Fulbright, I had no idea I would be surrounded by so many outstanding women in leadership. This week was full of travel. We rode a bus to Tartu for an international workshop called Islam in Europe, Challenges of Diversity and Ways to Coexistence. We did some exploring beforehand, which included the city center and the popular Varnar Cafe, frequented by artists, philosophers, and literary scholars. Everything was just as delicious as it looked. The conference itself was more educational about the Eastern European view of Islam than it was productive in terms of exploring solutions to biases and prejudices. It was a bit disappointing to hear the same roadblocks against understanding used here as in the US, though I won't pretend that I was surprised. Nevertheless, this workshop was important as it was the first official scholastic conversation held about Islam with input from religious leaders held in Estonia. Afterwards, I explored the University of Tartu, which included this mural on the side of the von Bach House, painted by University of Tartu art students. There were antique shops, kissing fountains, and useful road signs everywhere. I spent quite a bit of time trying to take a photo worthy of this National Geographic frame and walked along the river. The buildings in Tartu are colorful. Every street seemed to be highlighted with pink or yellow buildings. I found my way to St. John's Church, a brick Gothic Lutheran church seated on the edge of the city center and couldn't help but stare upwards. I stumbled upon the dormition of the Mother of God Cathedral before climbing Tomei Hill, feeling every cobblestone under my feet. At the tip of the hill stand the remains of the Tartu Cathedral, which dates to the late 13th century, but was heavily damaged during the Livonian War and further harmed by fire in 1624. This was quickly my favorite part of what I had seen of the city. And again, like many parts of Estonia, modernity stood strangely close to remnants of history.
After coming back to Narva for the night, we boarded another bus, this time to Tallinn for a party at the Estonian Academy of Sciences to welcome our friend Mr. Edward Dunn to his position as head of the Embassy of Public Affairs. We were told that having access to the balcony was a big deal, and I understand, because that view was excellent. I spent the next day wandering around Tallinn with Allison, another ETA living there. We mostly ate sugar and explored the city's never-ending street art. We walked through one of the greenest parks I'd ever seen to get to Mondo, a global education center based in Tallinn, to look for teaching resources. You okay? <laughs> <laughs> Eventually, we decided to be quite touristy and found Tompeia Hill and its famous views and souvenir shops. We also met Ambrosius, Bartholomew, and Claudius, three creepy monks in the Danish King Garden. After a long week, I came home to the company of my new friends Clara and Tina, who are currently traveling themselves. Happy Monday! Um, this video was difficult to film because of all of the sounds, uh, all of the different audio, but it was still a great week. Uh, lots of traveling. Uh, Tartu was beautiful. Tallinn I had already seen, but I got to see more of it than I had before, and it was equally beautiful. I can't wait to explore the rest of this country. If you would like to follow me on this journey, there is obviously this YouTube channel. Um, you can also follow me on Instagram and on Twitter. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below, or uh, message me on one of my social media platforms, and I will get back to you as soon as I can. I already went mushroom picking, so next week's video is going to be very like nature oriented, at least for the first few minutes, um, so you have that to look forward to. My name is Jill, and I am a Fulbright human in Estonia, which is incredible, um, and I will be here until June, so it's very exciting. Uh, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it. I'm just gonna drop dead. Like, <laughs> for A First kumquat experience. <laughs> Not a fan.